out rolling around on a Sunday evening. It's about 10.30 up here in Bountiful, Utah, up on the East Bench. You don't get a lot of repos in this area. As you can see from my mapping system, I don't have a lot of historical data for around here. A couple over the last few years hit and miss, but for the most part, this is a uncommon area for us to come into. It's always important for us to keep historical data on stuff like that, mapping where we go and trends that we see for different types of areas and stuff like that. But Okay, looks like this one's supposed to be a black 2005 Kia Sorento. Plate starts with Yankee 0 5 8. Looks like I've caught the interest of a police officer. He's been following me for the last couple blocks. They'll do that sometimes when they see us come into an area. Alright, let's see. Yankee 0 5 8 Black Sorento. 2918. I'll be on the right here. Looks like that's it right there. Oh, that's our vehicle. check to see if this thing is all-wheel drive or not using decodethis.com at the same time we'll get our back window camera going back camera it's down by the boom too so we'll get this vid number plugged in and then while it's doing its little search we'll run back there and wipe off the rear camera real quick got an EX four-wheel drive and an LX four-wheel drive. I didn't notice which one it was, so I'll just put in the EX. Obviously, it's four-wheel drive. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check and see what towthis.com says about this model. Towing options recommendations 2005 Kia Sorento <sighs> we've got a four-wheel drive and a rear-wheel drive so on the four-wheel drive it's gonna have to be dollied so if there's no drive line in the front this will be a rear-wheel drive vehicle so we'll hook it from the rear get it lifted Double check what it is. Go from there. A lot of people that complain about the two little blue strips on the camera at night when it reflects out the back window, so... What the heck? Customer's always right. They used to make it so you could turn those off inside the software. For whatever reason, they decided to take that capability out of the interface. So we'll do it the old school way. Alright. There we go. Turn the 
autofocus off. It likes to try to zoom in and out on its own when I've got the autofocus on, so make sure that looks good there. And I'm still working on getting better night vision for you guys when it comes to doing night repos. I've got a couple solutions I'm working on right now. Black out our main screen. Get our boom turned on. four-wheel drive you see the little transfer case up there in the front one in the back so gotta throw the dollies on it just to be safe luckily we just got to transport it up the street a little ways Finish strapping it down and throw the dollies on it. Head to our next one. address that the uh, finance company wanted this vehicle transported to just a couple blocks up the street from where the uh, vehicle was repossessed from and uh, sometimes finance companies will ask us to drop a vehicle at a temporary location that is not secure meaning it's not at a uh, impound of some kind and so 
when we don't have contact when we don't obtain keys come on get on there almost we'll uh take the extra precautions of disabling the vehicle trying not to breathe on the window and steam it up come on right, that's not gonna work so we'll go for the door lock here we go on that in the first place So what we'll do is uh, one of three things, either put a locking mechanism on one of the tires or steering wheel, but then you're leaving some of your own hardware behind. And so unless you've got it set up with the finance company that it's their hardware and they've got keys in their office, you can't use that option. Option two is to uh, pull the main power on the battery, which is what I'm doing right now. Option three is to uh, Pull a master fuse from the uh, fuse box. There you can see it was in too high, switchable too high, four high, four low on the dashboard. So but you always want to dolly these vehicles. If towspec.com says to dolly them, it's never worth a $3,000 plus transmission to be lazy. But yeah, I'll uh, use option two. I'm just going to pull the... That way, if they just happen to run over here in the morning before the finance company's open and they've still got the keys, they don't get the crazy idea to jump back in the vehicle and take off with it. And then we'll put in our notes to the finance company that how we disabled it. One extra step, precaution. You typically don't want to leave a vehicle in an unsecure location, but it's what the client asks for, it's what the client gets. They've got their reasons. It's not for us to question them. We just do the job. All right, let's get heading towards this next one. All right, so I don't know when my uh, camera stopped recording. Get the address for this passport and a cord. Seven eight seven five. That's our vehicle. Looks like the finance officer left his card on the door. The address is abandoned. The house is empty. There's supposed to be two vehicles here. I'm not seeing the second one. plates that are on this do not match what they have on the uh, order of repossession, but the VIN number matches and we're good to take it. You can tell by the way the snow is built up in front of the vehicle. Jeez, that's going to be a nightmare. Well, somewhere along the way my uh, memory chip on my GoPro camera filled up. I don't know how much video footage I got heading out to the uh, second address, but I uh, got out here and the white Honda Passport is here in the driveway of the house next door. The house is vacant and a big mound of snow in front of it. You can tell where the snow plows it. Plowed this cul-de-sac and big old buildup of ice and snow in front of the vehicle, so I used my wench and I wenched it up over the mound of snow. Now I'm picking it up and looking at it from the front. It's a stick, so it's a neutral. Oh man, and the black Honda Accord's not here. The uh, dude's father actually came out while I was hooking this and uh, we spoke with him. He said he's living in Salt Lake now. He is driving the Honda Accord. Didn't have an address for us, but we gave him a phone number to call. To see if they can get the account squared away. But in the meantime, they'll have Skip Locator start looking for that uh, new address. And we'll, we'll keep working the account accordingly until we. Uh, Either get a close or we find the second vehicle. Get this one uh, transported, dropped off where that other one's at, and then head south. 
All right, so I got my memory card cleared off, got everything copied over onto the laptop. I'll just transfer that over to my other computer later, but we got the uh, GoPro camera back up and going, and I heading back through Salt Lake. I ran a skip locate on this guy in Master Files, and up comes the uh, apartment complex address in Salt Lake City. This is his most recent address. So I plugged that into my mapping system, and we are here. So, let's see if we can locate this Honda Accord, complete this double header, have a good night here. Bravo 332. There's the Honda with Bravo 32. Backed in. Get my screen out. There's a black Honda right there. Backed in. No plate. Let's see what the VIN is. Zero five four four. That's it. Backed in even. to make a little miniature windshield wiper for my camera. I have to get out every time. It's rolling fine, so it doesn't feel like there's an e-brake on. I forgot to check to see if it was a stick or not, but it's rolling okay, so we'll get pulled straight here. Strap down. You can hear the compressor releasing a little bit of pressure as it adjusts for the weight of the vehicle. It's an automatic and the e-brake is off. So either the grandpa didn't call him and tell him that we had taken the passport or didn't get a hold of him or he just felt comfortable that we didn't have this address because it's just sitting here. My guess is if he had been warned he would have taken the time to move this thing. Which is one of the typical things that we run into when we're doing double headers and their vehicles are at two separate addresses.
always worry that someone's gonna call the other person. Windows down. It's raining, it's getting soaked inside, but door handle's broken on this side. Looks like it's had some kind of front end collision. Good old duct tape on it. It's a heck of a fix it job there. Road ready. Get this transported up. And it's not bad. Three cars in three hours. <sighs> Got my first pair of gloves, my winter gloves totally saturated and soaked. So then I switched to my second pair of gloves. Now they are saturated, soaked. One of those nights, rain. I've got a pair of insulated ones that are water resistant that I typically wear when I'm dealing with a lot of moisture. crazy how right here at this temperature just between raining and snowing and there's still snow patches on the ground I've seriously almost eaten shit like 10 times tonight hitting black ice with my feet you gotta be really careful when the weather gets like this rains on top of patches of snow it gets messy be extra cautious so there's no contact on this one. Get it called into Salt Lake Police. It's a good night. It's a real good night. We get a skip locate on this one too, so that's an additional fee as well. We charge half of what their uh, professional skip locating company charges for a new address, and so. They make out really well. They don't have, end up paying the full fee that they end up paying to the recovery or to the skipping company, to us. But we also don't have as many resources as the skipping company does, and so they are able to really find the hard to locate skips. I consider myself a really good skip locator because I've been doing it for years and years and years. But there's still professionals out there. That's all they do, though, all day long: skip locate, phone fishing. They got tactics and tricks and contacts and databases and I mean that's their full focus is on doing nothing but locating skips whereas my full focus is on doing repos. My expertise is in repossession and one of my side professions, you know, just like locksmithing and picking locks and breaking into vehicles and bypassing alarm systems and there's all these other things we have to be able to do to do our job well and you need to be like a jack of all trades you need to be good at a lot of things but there's got to be that one thing that you're expert at and my expertise is you know the recovery work and dealing with the public and talking to people and defusing bad situations and you know, everyone's got their set of tools they use to do their job and skip locating is just one of the many that I have but when we do have to pay for databases and stuff. We need to get reimbursed for those fees, and so we charge a small fee to locate a new address for them and tack that onto the recovery fee. Everybody wins in the end, except the debtor, I guess. <laughs> They're usually at the short end of the stick on my line of work, unfortunately. There's got to be someone that loses. I think I saw a saying the other day no one wins, just one, one side loses slower than the other. 
that doesn't define life. I don't know what does. See how bad the uh, back camera gets covered with debris and moisture when it's bad weather conditions outside. I have to get out and get off before I start executing a repo so I can see.